All right. We got this little guy here. All right, so this right here is the Sense Home Energy Monitoring Device. Device? I suppose you'd call it a device. That's what it is, basically, more or less. So we are going to shoot a little unboxing video and then show you a how-to video on how to install this guy in your electrical panel. That's what you can expect in this video. All right, so we got this guy to monitor our energy usage. This guy sells for 300 bucks. It's another 50 if you want the solar monitoring piece, which I got. Um, you can usually find it on sale for stuff like randomly throughout the year, whether it's Father's Day, Black Friday, um, something like that. I think I got $60 off on this one or some, something similar to that. So it was like, hey, cool, perfect time to buy. Now you will wanna check with your CPA or CPA, but this guy, since it is solar energy, energy monitoring software, if you buy that option, you should be able to add to the total cost of your solar installation and solar system so then you can add it to your tax credit. But you want to verify that. Our inverter right here, uh, the Solar Edge monitoring system, does come with an app you can install and monitoring system for, in, for monitoring the production of your solar system. Um, it's good for, I think, 25 years when you buy it. After that, you'll probably have to pay something for it on an ongoing monthly basis. But we decided to buy the Sense for a few reasons. This is more of a whole house energy, 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 energy monitor, energy monitor. This is a whole house energy monitoring system. So it's going to measure what you use, um, not just what you produce, which is what your inverter is gonna measure off your solar system. So you can buy it with the solar option. Now this guy is pretty simple. It, clamps around the main feeds coming into your main service electrical panel and then connects to your Wi-Fi system. So you'll want to check the specifications for what type of Wi-Fi you need and the different panel conditions that you have to have in order for this guy to work. The best way to describe how this guy works or the best analogy is that of what we can think of like a signature, right? So every device has what you could call a power signature, which is um, a unique signature as to how it consumes power. Well, that's not really like any of the technical term for it. Um, that's maybe the best way to understand how this works in very simple terms, right? In the same way that we have unique signatures, right? Like your signature doesn't look like my signature. Um, at least hopefully not, because if it did, you'd have that crazy long, ugly last name to try to figure out how to spell. I think it took me to like third grade just to figure out how to spell my own last name. But anyway, so this guy needs to connect to the Wi-Fi because it has a large database of all sorts of power signatures for different devices. And then it knows those signatures in that database. When it recognizes those power signatures of different devices cycling on or off in your home, it matches them and then makes a suggestion and says, hey, this must be your toaster oven. And you're like, how did you know? So that's basically how this guy works. So then you can see energy usage, right, by device, um, things like that. So you can break it down super simply, which is awesome. So it's really cool that you can do this at the panel level, right, on the main electrical panel that comes into your house. Because if you couldn't, then you're basically stuck doing it um, at the point of every single fixture in your house if you wanted insane amount of energy data, which I do, because I find that stuff just fascinating. Hashtag spreadsheets are my love language. Mm, nothing like a good spreadsheet in the morning. Know what I'm saying? Now, Sense is going to recommend that you hire a professional electrician and that is the only person who should be installing this. So they probably do that for liability reasons because electricity can kill you and people like to sue people. Hashtag America. Thanks to America, in some states, we are more free than other states and uh, in certain jurisdictions, you are, in states you are allowed to do electrical work on your own home. Here in Minnesota, you are. So if you own the home, and you can pull your own permit to do your own electrical work, provided you feel safe doing that, right? You have a basic understanding of electrical, home electrical systems, electrical safety, and you feel that you can safely install this, I'd say go for it. But don't take that too lightly because electricity can kill you. But then again, so can most things in life, like gravity. Thanks, physics. Thanks. Let's see what's in the box and have some fun.
Make sense of your home energy. Ha! These guys are like puns. I like them already. Cycle that, make sure it gets turned into some high quality Trex decking. Let's go install this guy. We're gonna need, obviously, all the parts that we have. I'm also gonna bring a flashlight with me because when we turn the power off at the main, it's gonna get dark. And then, handy bag of electrical tools. And we are simply gonna walk through the instructions step by step. That's really all that's to it. All right, so you are gonna wanna go to wherever your main circuit breaker is for your house. So ours is located right here. Open up the panel. The next thing we wanna do is turn off the main. All right, basic electrical safety. Uh, electricity always wants to get to the ground and it will flow through you if that's the easiest path to get there. So keep that in mind. Now, even when we turn our main off, we have our main on right now because we have the lights on in here so I can show you all this so we're not looking at it in the dark. But even when your main is off, keep in mind that your feeds are still on. So your feeds are these two black wires coming up here. They're hot, they're live, you touch them, you will be electrified, right? Whether you touch them or something metal comes in contact with them or anything conductive, that's what's gonna happen. So even when you turn that off, that part of the panel is still locked. Now that happens to be the part of the panel that we need to clamp our little clampy clamps around. So when you clamp the little clampy clamps, keep that in mind, be very careful, watch what you're doing. So obviously anything else that is on the black or red or hot side of things is gonna electrocute you if you touch it right now because everything's off. So we need a 240 volt breaker. We happen to have one here. Uh, it doesn't matter the amperage, but you could go with the lowest amp one you have in your panel. An electrician will have to install an additional one if you have room in a panel like we do down here at the bottom. Now this is where we're gonna do a little bit of troubleshooting and things get a little more complicated than just what's in the sense instructions. So right down here we have a 250 volt, or I'm sorry, a 200, a 240 volt breaker. Now these single breakers like this, these are 120, right? So 120, 120, 120. If you get a double one like this, like this circuit here is, uh, it says 30 on there, right? 30 amps. Um, right here's a 40 amp one, here's a 60 amp one, but voltage wise, if it's got the double like this, it's a 240 volt. If it's got a single like this, it's got a 120. So now uh, there's something that's called a double tap, which might not be the technical name for it, but that's basically where you slip two wires into the same breaker. Um, that is not uh, legal here for our electrical code, so we are not allowed to do that. So for example, we have you know any one of these 240 volts, um, they are all being used. However, this is what we're gonna do. You, so if you have, if you don't have a current 240 volt and all you have is, you know, like the 120 volts, um, you're gonna have to install an extra 240 volt. Now we have extra room, extra slots in the bottom of our panel for additional breakers. You might not have that. So if you don't have that, you kind of in trouble, right? You might have to hire an electrician and they'll come up with some sort of creative problem solving for you. And we have a couple empty 15s. Here's an empty fifth. You know, here's that empty 120, 15 amp. Here's another empty 120, 15 amp. Here's another empty 120, 15 amp. So if you have some empties like that, you can maybe, you know, rearrange some of these. Like I could take this one, pull it out, bring it down to this other empty, and then take both of these out and install a 240 right there, 15 amp, that, and then I could hook my sense up to that. So we have this one down here, which right now is for an attic blower fan, which we do not use anymore because it doesn't work and it's been decommissioned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this existing one and simply detach the wires of everything that's currently connected to that. So I'm gonna turn this guy off. I'm gonna unscrew the wires here and I'll probably end up capping them. So here's kind of the bummer about our panel situation. It's too cold in there or pretty close to it, right? So we took a look with a thermal imaging camera. It's about the same temp in the panel as it is outside. So, and that's because the back of our panel is recessed into the exterior stud wall. So it is the back of our panel is literally right against the um, building sheathing and then has stuck on the outside of it. So there's nothing between the panel insulating it. So it gets really cold in there. So we're gonna be below our uh, freezing temperature, which is not recommended for this. So I will install it outside the panel and we're gonna mount it off to the side over here and we don't have a whole lot of room for that so we gotta bust out 
a knockout and run our wires through that um, and up over to here where we'll mount the, the sense mounting bracket. So that makes it a little more complex, but still not too hard. Looking in sense, you'll see a couple different ports. We have our antenna one right here. Then on the bottom, um, that center one there is the solar. So if we choose to end up using that, we'll have to bust that out. Then we have the power port. And then we also have our feeder clamp port. The antenna has a hinge. It also has an extension cable that comes with it just in case you need that. I didn't need that in my installation, but you might in yours. Sense recommends that the antenna does need to be outside of the electrical box. And we're gonna try it. So it's time to install the mounting bracket. Now the mounting bracket may look upside down and that's because it is. I had to install it this way in order to get the antenna to fit in there because if I flipped it the other way, uh, there wouldn't have been enough room to close the door and for the wires to reach. If the wires are not long enough for your mounting situation, Sense does sell some extenders. Here I'm making sure it fits with the door closed again. Tighten down the screws. Snap the Sense Energy Monitor into the mounting bracket. Once we have our hole knocked out, we are going to feed the cord for the clamps through our new hole. So that we can plug it into sense. And then we're gonna also feed our power cord. Now this guy is too thick to fit through so we will feed him the other way with these wires. Which is surprisingly hard to do one-handed. Now that we have fed our wires into our panel, I'm gonna dismount Sense so you can plug these cables in. We are ready to take our power, hook it into our breaker, and then hook these guys around our main feeds. Anytime you run wires or cables through a knockout hole in a metal box, you want to use a clamp of some type. There's a couple different variants of that. The reason for this is you don't want the cables sheathing to rub against the metal and chafe off. So then it comes in contact with the wire causing a short or shock or fire. Okay, so when it comes to our wiring, we are gonna take both the red and the black wires and each one of those is gonna go into our 240 volt breaker and then our white wire is gonna go into our neutral bus bar. Now you can identify the neutral bus bar by looking up at your main feed. So we have our two hots coming in, right? The blacks, and then we have this white one here. That comes over to our neutral bus bar. And then that's this guy right here, our whole bus bar along here. So we have all these neutral wires for all our other circuits in the house coming off that guy. That's our bus bar where we'll tie into for the neutral. And you could put a little bend in the wire if that makes it easier to stick up in there. Tighten down this screw so that the wire is secured in place. We'll install the red and black wires into our two pole 240 volt breaker. Make sure you've inserted the wire far enough in so that none of the unsheathed wire is exposed. Make sure the wires are secure. All right, we are now ready to take our current reading clamps and clamp them onto our main feeds. This is the part where you wanna be super careful if you're doing this yourself because this is the part that even when you have a main breaker off, there's still power coming into those wires, right? So anything around them, any exposed wire there, anything that comes in context, it'll get you, get you real good. Latch you up like a Christmas tree. Now the instructions say it doesn't matter which way these go as long as they both face the same direction, right? So we want them both facing this way or both facing that way. What you don't want is one of them facing that way, one of them facing the other way. So we're gonna go ahead, clamp these around our main feeds. Tuck the wires out of the way so we can get the cover back on. So now they're gonna recommend, and this is probably the safer thing to do, is to put the cover back on the panel before you turn the main power back on. Uh, I'm gonna play it fast and loose because I don't wanna put the cover back on, throw all that stuff on there, then I have to take it off if it doesn't work. So right now, we uh, our main is back on. Now I've just gotta turn on the individual breaker that goes to sense, and if it works, we're gonna hear a chime, and if it doesn't work, we're gonna hear like a uh, sounding chime. So let's listen.
And if you hear no chime, and it's like there's this little light that's flashing on the side, real lightly. So you can see there's power in it, something's lighting up. Well, alrighty then. Time to do some troubleshooting. Never mind, there was. All right, now that's back on, since it's up and working, everything's good. And normally your panel label is gonna be on the inside door. I have it over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and relabel now this breaker. You can hear it kind of make a little bit of a humming noise, like a low. It's almost like so faint, you're not sure if you can hear it. Probably the way that like you might hear a dog whistle. You're like, do I hear that? It's weird, whatever frequency that is. So it's definitely making some weird noise. All that's left to do now is download and set up the Sense app, which is a pretty straightforward process. You simply follow the on-screen instructions, but I'll put a link down below to a video on that process just in case you're wondering what that looks like. You will notice that I did not install the solar clamps in this video, and the reason for that is simply that I don't have my system ready yet. So I don't have the leads coming off the panels to be able to install these guys around. Um, so you can expect a future video from me on that. What that process looks like, it's very similar to what we already did with the main leads coming in on our panel. Additionally, this video is part of a DIY solar install series that I'll be releasing here on this channel. So if you want to learn how to save money, increase your payback time by installing the solar system yourself and learning some sweet practical skills along the way, feel free to subscribe, ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that we release in this series and feel free to check out the playlist here. Hungry, hungry hippos, hungry, hungry hippos. So this here is the Sense Home Energy. Whoa. Gotta try it. Oh, yeah. Good nose clamp. Oh, you can't smell a thing. You also can't breathe, but that's a different story.